President Barack Obama has been working on his farewell address to the nation, dictating the text to his personal secretary, Lola Vavoom. In a dramatic exclusive, we here at The Andrew Clavin Show have obtained a copy of the first draft of this speech, thanks to a relationship with Ms. Vavoom that is not at all what my wife thinks it is, depending on what the meaning of is is, or what the meaning of meaning is or whether I can climb out of Lola's window before my wife's private detective breaks in. Here, then, is an exclusive look at the first draft of Obama's farewell remarks, giving us an insight into how he's assembling his thoughts for his final speech as president. Quoting now from the document. My fellow Americans, you lousy SOBs. What do you mean I can't call them SOBs? Look what they did to me, Lola. They've ruined everything. They've turned me into a punchline of a bad joke. What's black and white and red all over? My face, that's what. (laughs) Now that this nation of Bible-clinging idiots has humiliated me by electing some orange-haired gorilla to disassemble all of my beautiful achievements. Damn it, stop crying, Lola. I can't think with all that blubbering going on. Just pour me another drink and shut the hell up for once. Now, where was I? Oh, yes, after everything I did for these lousy gun-toting rubes. Obamacare, what was that, chopped liver? I mean, I'm not sure exactly what was in it, but it was like free medicine or something. I give people free medicine, and all I hear for eight years is you said we could keep our doctor, and now we can't keep our doctor. Well, boo-hoo. Play me the world's smallest violin, idiots. And what about that Paris climate thingamajig, whatever? They tell me that baby will keep the sun shining for another thousand years at least. Could Donald Trump do that? Hey, bring back that bottle, Lola. I'm still the president, damn it, and if I want to drink, I will. Why shouldn't I drink? I was going to be Lincoln. I was going to be FDR. Didn't you see the pictures of me in the magazines dressing me up as great presidents? I won the Nobel Prize for crying out loud. Now what am I? A failed palooka with a one-way ticket to nowhere. Hillary would have made me head of the UN. That's practically (laughs) like being king king of the world. Instead, I'm going to grow old giving (laughs) highfalutin... giving highfalutin speeches to frosty-haired old dowagers who go into raptures about how articulate I am for a black man. Plus, I'm stuck with Michelle. Michelle doesn't understand me, not like you understand me, Lola. Now give me that damn bottle. All right, all right, I'll finish my farewell speech first. Farewell, America, and screw you. You suck, love Barack. How's that? Now give me another drink. Unquote. Guessing the, the president is still working on a second draft. Trigger warning, I'm Andrew Claven, and this is The Andrew Claven Show. I feel hunky dunky, life is tickety boo. Birds are winging, also singing, hunky dunky doo. Ship shaped, dipsy topsy, the world is a bitty zing. It's a wonderful day, hurrah, hooray, it makes me want to sing. Oh, hurrah, hooray. All right, that was totally our producer Jay's fault. <laughs> I used to have something blocking him from my eye line. Now when he cracks up, he cracks me up. All right, it's mailbag day. Yay! Yay! You know, uh, we will. T- I have some uh, questions already in, and we will take live questions. So if you send live questions while we're doing the mailbag, you can. Uh, I will try and answer them with questions. With answers are a hundred percent guaranteed correct. Uh, but only if you subscribe. That's right. you got to subscribe, and it will happen after we cut you off uh, ruthlessly from Facebook and YouTube. So it's in the second half of the show, so you got to stick around for that. It's only a lousy 8 bucks a month, and for that, you get me, you get Shapiro. We, I think we come and clean your car and stuff like that. It's, it's great. Uh, today also is St. Andrew's Day. Did you know this? It's Saint, yes, and, and it's no coincidence that it's also the last sale day for my memoir, The Great Good Thing, A Secular Jew Comes to Faith in Christ. For one more day, it is on sale as an e-book for three bucks. But if you spend the whole thing, you can get it as a real book and give it to someone for Christmas, which makes a great Christmas gift. It's not, it can't be a coincidence that it's also St. Andrews. That's probably a coincidence. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so Donald Trump, I've been thinking about this a lot. Donald Trump tweeted today, sent out a series of tweets I will be holding a major news conference in New York City with my children on December 15th to discuss the fact that I will be leaving my great business in total in order to fully focus on running the country in order to, in all caps, make America great again. 
While I am not mandated to do this under the law, I feel it is visually important as president to in no way have a conflict of interest with my various businesses. Hence, legal documents are being crafted which take me completely out of business operations. The presidency is a far more important task. That was his series of tweets. Now, this has been, uh, this is actually very important, I think. This is the first thing that uh, has happened in a while, besides the, the actual appointments. There's been a lot of fuss about every little thing, but this is actually important. He's not saying how he's going to do it. He's not saying if it's going to be a blind trust. If his children run it, it's still going to be problems for him. But this is a thing that uh, is going to be used against him, whether he is doing the wrong thing or not, to slow down his agenda. Everything he does is going to be, well, did he you know, did he break the law? Did he break some ethical things? You know, Judge Napolitano, the legal expert on Fox, was talking to Megyn Kelly about this, and this was his judgment of it as a legal matter. The problem for President-elect Trump is a political one and not a legal one. The reason it's not a legal one is that all the ethics rules that the Congress has written and, and his predecessors have signed into office regulating everybody that works for the federal government have two exceptions to them the vice president and the president. So none of the rules that govern everyone else govern him. Stated differently, he can lawfully run the executive branch of the federal government and operate his businesses at the same time. He can engage in dealing which appears to be a conflict of interest. And again, the remedy is political, it's not legal. Look, he can't break the law. He can't accept payments from foreign uh, uh, governments uh, in order to confer benefits on them. And even his wildest critics have not accused him of that. But he, if he, if he toes the line, can probably do what he says he's going to do, be a good businessman and be a great president at the same time. But what the judge is saying is that the rem when he says the remedies are political, that means constant investigations, every decision he makes, did it help him? Is he, did he do it for the money? Was he taking emoluments? You know, the whole, the whole thing is just going to slow him down. And, of course, there's a danger that the nation sinks into kleptocracy. I mean, you know, the idea that thieves are running the government solely to make a profit like they do uh, in Russia, basically. So this is important to me personally because I am constantly watching this president-elect to see how I feel about it. I was a guy who really did not like Donald Trump. I do not like the way he behaved during the uh, primaries. I didn't like the bullying, the little Marco stuff. I know that stuff was funny and, uh, you know, appealing to a lot of people, but it really bugged me. I don't like people who treat other people like that. I don't like a president who did it. it even worse were some of the, that some of the conspiracy thing, even the thing about, you know, uh, Barack Obama's Kenyan birth certificate. That, that was funny, too, because B Obama was kind of trolling the right with it, and Trump trolled him back, and that was kind of funny. But when he did this stuff about Ted Cruz's father, you know, why was he, why did he know Lee Harvey Oswald, whatever the hell it was from the uh, Inquirer, it really, it really made me feel like, God, this guy has no morals. There's no, nothing containing him. At the same time, at the same time, I really did understand what the people saw in him, because the left has bullied the people so long. The left, I mean, this is, this is a country in which large swaths of the manufacturing base have disappeared, have gone over to other countries. People are out of work. People are on meth. People's kids are on meth. People don't work and they don't want to work because they've got enough welfare and they sit around and play video games. And it's like a country where there's deep, deep problems. And meanwhile, the president of the United States is talking about transgender kids and which bathroom they can use. And you're sitting there thinking like, what? You know, what the hell are you talking? You know, they're doing all this stuff about fake news. I, you know, I hammer the, the news media all the time because I think it's a much, much, much bigger problem than even the people who attack it do. I mean, the news media, the, the mainstream media and its bias is jet fuel to people like Rush Limbaugh. There wouldn't be a Rush Limbaugh if he didn't have them to debunk all the time. But it really does skew. It is like constant, constant bullying, and it skews people by not telling them the truth. I just found this. Christian I'm a poor journalist, who was one of these, the most biased uh, journalists in the country. And she gets so upset when anybody calls her biased. What do you mean? You know, I, pardon me. Here she is giving a speech about climate change. Listen to what she says. We cannot continue the old paradigm. We cannot, for instance, keep saying, like it was over global warming, where 99.9% .9 of the science, the empirical facts, the evidence, is given equal play with the tiny minority of deniers. I learned a long, long time ago 
when I was covering the genocide and ethnic cleansing in Bosnia, never to equate victim and aggressor, never to create a false moral or factual equivalence. Because then, if you do, particularly in situations like that, you are party and accomplice to the most unspeakable crimes and consequences. So those of us who oppose, I mean, this is a journalist, right, telling, telling people that no, you cannot be unbiased, you cannot be objective and give play to those of us who think, for instance, I think the world is getting warmer. It seems the evidence it hasn't for, for the last 15, 16 years or so, but it has been getting warmer. But it's gotten warm before. After all, the Great Lakes used to be glaciers, you know. I mean, where was, where was Christian Annamanpour then to, to save us, you know, from having Great Lakes? The world gets warmer and colder. What those of us who, don't, who think this is a lot of malarkey are suspicious about is a series of uh, policies that simply enacts the power, the deepest desires, the shopping list of the left with no promise of changing anything about global warming, none, no science. There is no science that shows that anything they want to do, the taking over, the taxing on carbon, uh, on uh, fossil-based fuels, the, you know, the government control over our energy business, it's all just the left doing its thing to redistribute wealth, to hobble wealthy countries that have gotten wealthy through industry and capitalism, and to give that money to to throw it down the pit of countries that have not become wealthy because they don't have capitalism, because they don't have democracy, they don't have the, the industries that make countries rich. Most people are poor throughout history. That's the, that is the historical truth. It's the, it's the rare free country and free culture that becomes wealthy. So, so we have these people bullying us. You know, if you don't like transgender, a boy in a dress and your little girl's bathroom, you're a hater. If you are against global warming, you're as bad as the genocidal killers, you know. And basically, I feel the people said, you want to bully us? We got a bully for you, you know. I mean, they could have gone with Ted Cruz, who actually was a revolutionary right winger. They didn't. They went with this guy. And I have a lot of respect. You know, the thing about the presidency, the president's only one guy. The presidency is not about the commentary. It's not about me. It's not about whether I'm happy. It's not about whether I feel good about myself. It's about whether the people are better off and freer and, and able to become prosperous if they have the opportunity to become prosperous. So my question now, asking myself as a guy who didn't like Trump and who is watching him very carefully, is how's he doing? And I have to admit, kleptocracy is one of my fears with, with him, that he doesn't have the kind of moral framework to not do it. So I'm really happy to hear at least what he's saying so far, and I'm going to watch and see how it develops. It, it doesn't bother me. It does not bother me. Any, look, i got to be honest. It didn't bother me that Clinton was having an affair with Monica Lewinsky. If I was married to Hillary Clinton, I'd be having an affair as well. You know, it, it bothered me that he was using the Oval Office, but, you know, that's, that's another matter altogether. I'm not the president's daddy. You know, I'm not here to make sure that he's a nice guy. A jerk who helps the people is absolutely fine with me. So if the ambassador from Svenlandia comes to visit the president and feels it would be good for him to stay at the Trump Hotel, I don't care. I really don't care. But if the decisions that he makes are guided and generated by whether he makes a profit, I very much do care. That is the way for a nation to collapse. That's the way nations fall with that kind of corruption uh, at the head of it. So the fact that he's not doing that is really good to me. It is really a good sign to me. I love his appointments. I'm really happy with his appointments. And I kind of like what he's doing to the media. You know, the media has been doing this whole thing about fake news, fake news. And fake news is basically a way of sh shutting me up. It's, it's, you know, they've declared the Daily Wire, one, one list declared the Daily Wire a fake news site. The Washington Free Beacon did a supercut of fake news. I love this. Let's, let's just take a listen to some fake news. And when I say fake news, I mean stories that are designed to trick people into believing lies. Let's be clear. Donald Trump will lose the election. Right now, Donald Trump will lose the election. I mean, if you look at the battleground states right now, Donald Trump's going to lose. This is different what Donald Trump's doing. It's sinister. It reeks of Joe McCarthy. Texas is still competitive. Is the, is the election over? I mean, a lot of political scientists would say, at, th at this point, nothing matters. Today, Citibank said, if Trump's elected, the market will go down 3 to 5 percent. If Donald Trump wins the election, the stock market will tank. I mean, and that would hurt the stock market. If Trump were to win, you know, the stock, stock market would go down. You know, one of the pillars of the infamous blue wall. Think about if she can hold there, that's a key part of that blue wall. Trump clearly going after that blue wall. It's whether Hillary Clinton's going to win by small margin 
or whether we're going to essentially annihilate Donald Trump. I think Hillary will win. And most analysts are saying that Hillary Clinton's going to win in a landslide. I still think it's likely that Hillary Clinton will win. 38 to 40 percent of people, roughly speaking, are going to have voted for, for Trump. And if Donald Trump does lose, particularly if he loses in the face of a, a massive turnout from Latino communities. But there's an invisible surge with the Latinos. The surge of the Latino vote, that that's going to be enough. The surge in Hispanic Latino voting. This is the number right here we're all going to be talking about after the election. It is the Hispanic vote. But the surge of Latino voters. African American voters and Hispanic voters and college educated white women especially are coming out in droves. He claims that the media is lying and that its reporting cannot be believed. So Donald Trump will lose. They're the most basic, pure form of fake news. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> See, this is the thing. You know, I don't want to die in the cause of schadenfreude. I don't want to die just laughing at the left while, while Donald Trump does something terrible, uh, you know, on, on our side. That doesn't help me at all. doesn't help the country at all. We need a free press. We need a free press. We need a press to, to harry the, the president, to speak truth to power. We don't have that press. We don't have that press. The press we have is the enemy of freedom. An all-Democrat, all-dishonest press is the enemy of freedom. And so when I see Donald Trump send out a tweet about burning the flag and the press goes nuts over it, to me, what Trump is doing, I think what Trump is doing when he says, oh, if you burn the flag, you should lose your citizenship, total nonsense. But he's ta to, what I think he's doing is he's talking like a guy in a bar. You know, he's talking like me in a bar, you know, hey, you burn the flag, you should lose your citizenship. You know, he's going to have to rein some of that in because he's going to be president. But still, watching the press go nuts over it is fun. Hey, we got to say goodbye to our friends on Facebook and YouTube, but come on over to The Daily Wire. And if you subscribe, you can be part of the mailbag. We will change your life. And boy, does it need changing.